Hello, and welcome to a guide on how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. This will be an explanation on the aspects of the game that are not explained well in the tutorial. The first thing you need to know about this game is that there is no overarching resource that you need to manage like mana. This game runs on meeting the requirements to activate your cards and effects. Now let's move on to deck building. You can't play a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! without a deck. In each deck there are three different types of cards you can have. Monsters, spells, and traps. And those categories are subdivided further based on what each card does. First, we have normal monsters. Simply put, this monster doesn't do anything special. Second, we have the effect monster. This card does do something special when its conditions are met. Third, we have extra deck monsters, which I'll get into later. For spells, we have normal spells, which can only be played during your main phase. Again, something I'll explain later. Quick play spells, which, which can be played at almost any time. Continuous, which stay on the field. Field spells, which provide benefits to specific monster cards. Equip spells, which can be equipped to a monster pr to provide extra durability or stats. And ritual spells, which are used to summon ritual monsters. And for traps, we have normal traps, which are similar to quick play spells, can be played at almost any time. Counter traps, which can stop other effects from activating and continuous traps which stay on the field and can be used whenever the condition is met. Note that traps must be set face down for one turn before they can be played. However, they can be played at almost any time, even on your opponent's turn. Now that you know the different types of cards, it's time to start deck building. A deck can hold between 20 to 30 cards in the main and up to 7 in the extra. There are many resources to utilize if you want to make a good deck. First, we have the auto build feature that is built into the game. Just choose which card you want to use in your deck and the game will build the rest. You can always look online for other deck lists as well. Duelinksmeta.com is a great resource to get you started. This is where you can check out new decks to play along with the cards needed to build them most efficiently. You can find where each card can be obtained through the Duel Studio in game. Now, let's talk about what to look for in a deck. Every deck should have a strategy behind it. For this first one, we have a lot of monsters with very powerful effects that allow them to search for more cards or summon others onto the field. However, as you can tell, this deck doesn't have many spells or traps. The second deck I want to look at has many spells and traps in it. This deck has monsters that can activate their effects when a spell or trap card is activated. And the third deck, we have specialize on not having spells or traps to make the monster effects more powerful. All these cards are from the same archetype, meaning that they have built-in combos that work together. Now let's talk briefly about skills. Each deck can have one skill to go with it, and each skill can provide extra advantage to the player outside of activating a card's effect, meaning that some skills can change the course of a duel. For example, Destiny Draw, which allows you to search for any card in your deck after nearing fatal damage. Be sure to check what skills would be useful when building a deck. Now let's move on to actual dueling. The first thing you need to know is the different phases of the game. The first phase in each turn is the draw phase. This is where you or your opponent draws their card for turn. You always start by drawing one card except for the very first turn of the game. The next phase is standby, where certain effects will and can be activated. Traps and quick play spells can also be activated at this time. Next is the most important phase of the turn, main phase. This is where you will be able to activate spells, summon monsters, and set traps. Then we move to the battle phase. On the very first turn of the duel, there is no battle phase, as only one player has had the opportunity to activate cards. However, during this phase, monsters that have been summoned have the opportunity to fight other monsters to try to reduce the life points of the opponent, or deal with other monsters. I will explain how life points work later. Lastly, we have end phase. This is basically standby phase, but at the end of the turn. Let's move on to summoning a monster. There are three ways to summon a monster. Normal summoned in attack position, set in face down defense position, or specialed in either face up attack or face up defense. You can only normal summon or set once per turn. There is no limit to special summoning. To normal summon a monster, you must look at the level of the monster, indicated by the number of stars, on the top of the card, right below the name. 1 to 4 can be normaled or set without any restriction, 5 to 6 require you to sacrifice one monster to normal or set it, and 7 or above require two monsters. 
and any of the divine monsters require three. As for special summoning, there are a plethora of ways to do that. But simply put, you must meet the requirements to summon the monster, or activate an effect that allows you to special summon a specific monster. Many monsters have effects based on how they are summoned, so be sure to watch for those. Now comes the fun part. The reason Yu-Gi-Oh is so beloved. The extra deck. These monsters are available to be summoned at any time as long as you meet the requirements. Unlike the monsters in the main deck, however, these can only be special summoned and never normal summoned. Many of these monsters have exceptional effects and easy summoning conditions, making them ideal for boss monsters. First, we have fusion monsters, which require two named material and normally a spell card to fuse them together. Next, we have synchro monsters, which require you to have a specific type of monster called a tuner and one or more other monsters. Then, you must add together the levels of the monster to match the level of the synchro monster you wish to summon. Some synchro monsters require specific cards and or types to summon. And lastly, we have XZ monsters. Yes, it's called XZ. These monsters simply require you to have two or more monsters with the same level in order to summon them. However, unlike the other ways to summon, these monsters become attached to the XZ monster and can be used to activate powerful effects. And lastly, for monsters, we have pendulums. These are more complicated than the rest, however, I will make this as simple to understand as I can. These cards are both monsters and spells, however, they can only be considered a monster or a spell at any given time. They are always considered a monster while in the deck. Some have both a monster and a spell effect. The monster and their effects work like normal, and the spell effects work like a continuous spell. However, they can only be placed in the face-up, left or right spell and trap card zones. Whenever they are destroyed or tributed, instead of going to the grave, they go face-up in the extra deck. The numbers on the sides of the card indicate the pendulum scales. Pendulum scales can be used to perform a pendulum summon if you have two pendulum cards face up in your left and right spell and trap card zones. Pendulum summon is much like a normal summon. You get one per turn. However, it is considered a normal summon. I know this is confusing, just stay with me. Scales indicate the level of monsters you can summon from your hand or face up extra deck. Meaning, if you have a scale that goes from 1 to 8, you can summon monsters in between those scales, meaning levels 2 to 7, not 1 to 8. Make sense so far? Good. You can summon as many monsters from your hand as you have open monster zones to summon them to, but you can only summon one monster from the face up extra deck. Honestly, I would avoid these cards until you understand the rest of the game first. Now let's talk about how to win the game. There are two ways. You can bring your opponent's life points to zero through monster combat or effects, or you can make it so that they have no cards left to draw during their draw phase. First off, each player starts with 4,000 life points before skills and effects are activated. During the battle phase, the turn player may use any attack position monsters to attack the opponent's monsters. If you have a monster on the field that has a higher attack value than an opponent's monster and they battle, the one with the higher attack wins, destroys the other monster, and inflicts the difference in value as battle damage to the life points of the loser. If there are no monsters on the opposing side of the field, a monster may attack the life points directly, dealing the entire value of the attack stat as battle damage to the opposing life points. However, if an attack position monster battles a defense position monster, the monster with the higher attack stat would still destroy the monster, but the difference in values would not result in damage. If the defense value is greater, the attacking monster is instead not destroyed, but the attacking player loses the life points totaling the difference between the defense and attack. Monsters do not lose or gain attack and defense after battling another monster. As for effects, they will deal damage directly to the opposing life points if the conditions are met. Whoever loses all of their life points first loses the duel. Let's talk quickly about chain links. Simply put, effects don't happen at the same time, but may trigger at the same time. If the trigger for multiple cards is met, at the same time, a chain will form and resolve in reverse order. 
This means you can prevent effects from activating if you chain a card that can prevent that effect from happening to the activation of the original card. Don't worry if you don't get it, the game does this automatically. Let's move on to ban list cards, or cards that can only be played in a certain amount or not at all. These cards have proven too strong for the game and are therefore limited to reduce their impact. Basically, you can only have one card that is limited to one in your deck. Two limited to two and three limited to three. You may not have any forbidden cards in your deck. The last thing I want to mention is missions. These are special requirements that can be met by dueling. They will give you rewards like money, gems, and even new characters. Just go to the missions section on your home screen in the top left and read what must be done to finish a mission. Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most rewarding card games out there. The more time you put into understanding how this game works, the better you will become. So, go out there and play. As they say, practice makes perfect. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It really does help me out and lets me know that you want more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye.